what you say, don't say what you do. Don't think to blame for things that ain't true. Don't spend it all in one place. A short fuse will blow up in your face. A short fuse will blow up in your face. Never forget to hold her hand. Silence is better than a rambler man. Do your best to stay in your lane. And whiskey won't fix a heart that aches. Whiskey won't cure a heart that aches. These are a few things to know. As you ramble on down the road. Low budget live, not so live. And that is a song right there that I wrote a couple years ago. It's like kind of a, a letter to my kids kind of thing. And uh, I think I played it last year. Um, and that's just a really terrible recording off of an iPhone next to my swimming pool. But the uh, song's always meant a lot to me. And uh, I'll play the rest of it at the end of the show. But happy late Father's Day to you out there, all you all you daddies, and all all the mamas that had to be daddies. There's a lot of that that goes on in life too, right? Mamas are superheroes too. But uh, to all the to all the dads out there, <clears throat> man, we got uh, it's cliche. It's the best job in the world. It's the greatest gift. There's actually a line in that song that says the the greatest gift. Uh, is being a dad, and it, it is, man. It, it comes with its trials and tribulations, for sure. They can put you through the ringer uh, as you go through the different life cycles and stages and whatnot. But it is, uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And uh, I'm actually recording this on Sunday morning. This is the podcast for June the 19th, Monday, June the 19th, the day after Father's Day. But I'm recording this early uh, on on Father's Day morning here, and uh, was gonna do this podcast tonight with uh with a guest adrian avena and uh he and i couldn't get our schedules lined up really he's a, he's a busy man and uh and and so am i because of being a dad my son hudson he's playing basketball for the high school and uh he's playing some aau ball right now and he has uh, a basketball tournament this weekend about two hours from the house and we've been driving back and forth and uh they made it deep into the tournament so they got to play again this evening so we're gonna we're home now but we got to drive back up there so it's just you know uh, I was like I, I was really selfish last weekend when they announced they were playing a long ways away I was like damn we're gonna be in a gym on Father's Day weekend and I was like wait a second you're gonna be with your kids doing what they love to do on Father's Day weekend that's kind of the point so uh I just kind of wanted to sit by the pool though you know, and hang out with them, but uh, but instead we're gonna do some driving and we're gonna be be in a gym. We spent uh, all day yesterday in a gym, but but yeah, it's a uh, it's a it's a very uh, it's a it's a great thing, and it is one of those that uh, you know you can get frustrated at times. I know so many of y'all probably feel that as a dad, but then you know these moments are just going away, like as you. As uh, as every day clicks off of that calendar, that you're just another day uh, closer to them getting out and uh, and on their own. And we've already got that around here. You know, I'm fortunate enough to be the father uh, slash stad stad as they call me around here. Stepdad for three awesome kids, and and uh, of course Hudson and Ryder and Wes, Charlie and Harper. And uh, Charlie and Harper already, I mean, they're doing their thing. You know, they they are uh, out there working, got jobs. And, uh, and so it's just Wes Ryder and Hudson hanging in here with us now, but, uh, it's a, it's a great thing, man. And I was fortunate, I was fortunate to, uh, this whole world that I live in, um, I was fortunate to have a dad that, that really, uh, encouraged it. You know, he always, um, he was not a naysayer for the most part with any crazy dream I ever had, no matter what it was. And I feel like I hit him with a lot of those <laughs> over the years. But, uh, you know, he always wanted me to work hard and, uh, and work smart and, uh, and do the right thing. But he, he very much, uh, he very much never handcuffed me in any way. So I owe him a lot for that. And, uh, you know, even though he and I, he, he would also tell you if he was sitting right here today on this podcast and I've had him on 
before, but he would tell you that uh, he and I are a lot alike. And uh, with that comes a lot of trials and tribulations of its own and, and uh, not necessarily seeing eye to eye all the time over my 39 years on earth and, and uh, on things. And, and, uh, and, I'm, and I'm learning that as I get older. I'm learning that with my kids, right? I'm learning that, um, that maybe the old man was right. Uh, more times than not, <laughs> and and uh, and I hope that my kids see that uh, in me one of these days as well. So uh, again, happy Father's Day to all y'all out there. And uh, you know we're lucky, we're lucky, you bunch of low lifers. If you're a dad, you're lucky. Uh, something I want to bring up real quick. I forgot to do this last week, and uh, and and this is a very fitting uh, week to do this. But I had a man reach out to me, David Pope. Uh, David lives down in the Birmingham area uh, of Alabama, and he he is uh, David is uh, is going through it right now. And he's a low lifer. And he reached out to me, and I wanted to spread the word on this because David has a son, Grayson Pope, and Grayson is committed to playing baseball for Go Big Orange, University of Tennessee. He's a hell of a baseball player, hell of a young man. And in an absolute freak accident a couple weeks ago. Uh, He was at a golf course and a tree fell on his golf cart and his friends were able to get out of the way and Grayson did not. And he suffered a brain injury. This is a, this is a young man that plays baseball every day. This is a young man that plays multiple sports, very smart young man. And like I say, he's about 16 years old and he's committed to play in the SEC in baseball. And uh, now he's in a hospital bed and uh, he's going through it and his family's going through it. And David's a low lifer. And I just wanted to, to, uh, Spread the word for that, but he he's his name's Grayson Pope, and they have Venmo set up. They have lots of things going on. If you want to show them support, you can get on Facebook, and I've got the information right here. Um, but but they just uh, it's it's uh, it's sad, man. And and I know Grayson. He he's they they give updates on the page, and the triple threat and I have been following it since David reached out about a week or so ago. And I meant to mention this last week on the show, uh, and it just got by me to be honest, and the and the crazy. Um, but as I look at my kids on a father's day and I, I can't imagine what, what David and his wife are going through right now, um, when you feel helpless and, uh, you know, watching your kid go through it. So, uh, but you can, it's prayers for Grayson Pope is one of the Facebook pages, Grayson G R A Y S O N Pope. And then there's another one, uh, that, that, that's the main one, but hashtag pray for gray on there, but they have Venmo's and, you know, all this is, uh, all this is very, very costly when you're basically living in and out of a hospital. And I know so many families go through it, and I wish that I could talk about every single one of them, you know, on the show and try to get folks help. But uh, but it's one of our own. It's a low lifer, and he reached out to me, sent me an Instagram message in the middle of the night well, last week, and um, and they're going through it, folks. So I want to say that here on Father's Day. As I sit here and, uh, and I really caught myself, you know, kind of complaining about sitting in a damn gym. Um, you know, we ought to be grateful that we get to, to, you know, chase these kids around doing whatever they, it is that they do, uh, in life. So prayers for the, uh, for the Pope family there. And, and, uh, you know, any you low lifers want to go look into that, let them know you're supporting them. You think about them, praying for them, whatever it is, um, feel free to do that. All right, let's, uh, let's thank some folks real fast and then let's get into the business here. Star trying star bright. Products down there in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Star trying to keep an ethanol out of your gas tank. Star Bright keeping you looking fresh and clean. It's Star Bright season. That's what they say. It's Star Bright season. So get your ride looking fly. And it doesn't matter if it's your truck, your boat, whatever. They got cleaning products for RV. They've got a little bit of everything down there. Get on their website, check it out. They actually uh, have a lot of products and they've got it in about every store you can think of, whether it's some of the the uh, Walmarts of the world, the Bass Pro Shops of the world. You can find it there online, lots of places. Startron kicking ethanol in the teeth and Starbright getting you f- finer than frog hair. Pro Guide Batteries, ProGuideBatteries.com. LBL10 saves you cash there. LBL10, ProGuideBatteries.com. They've got a sale going on through the 4th of July right now. Really, it's my birthday sale. My birthday's the third. So, 
you can get it. They got several different uh, sales going on, but the uh, lithium battery package, you can buy a single lithium battery for a really good deal. You're going to want to get on there and check that out. LBL10 lets them know you are a low lifer. I love my trolling batteries, man. I, I say it on here week in and week out. They really, uh, they put them, to, they, they go through every test that I put them through and they're AGM batteries. If you're not a lithium person, if you don't want to go that route, they're AGMs, their 31 series is freaking bulletproof as far as that I can see in, in the near three years that I've been running them. And uh, I run all kind of crap on them. So uh, I got, I'm running two live scopes right now. As a matter of fact, I'm experimenting with things in the Express. So I've got all that ran into uh, one 31 series AGM right now. But check them out, proguybatteries.com. Baitworks.com, bait-works.com, bait-works.com. That's right. That's right, bait-works. Don't forget the dash. And don't forget Duncan Dash 10 when you're on there to save you some money. Let them know you're a low lifer. Get you some of those LOB jigs. Get you some of that delicious mega bass they got there. That big old wall of zoom they got out there. They actually have a killer shop in Springfield, Missouri, if you if you're in the area. But uh the LOB jig caught some more on it this week. When I got to go, caught some more on it. I got uh, pictures sent to me, some big smallies getting called on it this week. I love it. Y'all be sure when you get some LOBs to send me a, a message, tag me up and post whatever. But it's uh, it's awesome to see. But they got the LOB jigs. They got that Randy Blockett jig that people like. That so many people like to talk about because it's $10. Randy be selling some jigs now. They got the Dion Hibden jig. They have several things that they actually build themselves, those signature series baits. Really cool. And They've got every brand under the sun, and if you don't want it, don't order it because it's going to show up and your wife's going to be pissed off. Bait-works.com, Duncan-10. All right, and last but not least, hang the freaking banner. <laughs> Express Boats Hot Springs, Arkansas, the original all-welded aluminum bass boat, that X21 Pro 250 Yamaha show, pushing it to the best hole shot in the game, Sea deck Bowdestern. I mean, you can also get carpet if you're a carpet guy. I'm not a carpet guy. I'm a sea deck guy. I am a sea deck guy for life. I, I, I truly hope because uh, when I was over at Gunnersville a couple of weeks ago with with my dude Ryan and, and dudes Ryan and Brandon, grass everywhere, fish blood, slime, you name it. And dude, you just go <whistles> with the hose when you get it back in. It's killer. It's killer, and they are the they the first bass boat to do it bow to stern. Um, comes in several color combinations, but don't just focus on that X twenty one. The X nineteen is a is a just a freaking battleship as well. The H seventeen, absolutely. If you're not in the market for a bigger boat, great boat. They got the bay boats. They even got veranda pontoons over there that express boats on. You can really, I mean, you can make your wife happy. Get her a pontoon, make her happy. My wife is mad because I won't get her a pontoon. I'm like, go ride in the X-21. Best hole shot in the game. Best tackle storage. It's a beast. And she's just pissed off that I won't get her veranda pontoon. Express boats, building excitement since 1966. Now that I read off all those folks that make this possible, that, that you know, sponsor reads piss people off. And it's always amazing to me. Um, I'm very proud. I'll read them for 15 minutes because it means people uh, b- people like what we do here. Uh, so like I said, going to have, uh, Adrian Avina on at some point. I'm an Adrian fan. I, he's one of the hardest workers in the game and he's, he's such a unique dude. I, I love successful pros from that Northeast region just because man, there's so much, of course you've got I can Ellie from up there, um, you know, kind of setting the standard right for that, for that area. But it's not just this bass fishing history, rich area necessarily, and but there's a lot of freaking fish heads up there, as the boys at iClive call them. And Adrian is one, but he also doubles as this charter captain. Really, really does some neat things in life. He's a hard ass worker. And what I'm going to get into today, and and Adrian and I, we try to get our schedule. He's been guiding every day, charter captain in between events to make money and. Uh, we're trying to get our schedules together, and I thought we were going to make it happen today, and and, and it's on me. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do it, like I said earlier, because of basketball this evening. So this is a Luke Duncan podcast. You're getting the sauce presented by the W sauce from Luke Duncan today, and I got a lot to talk about. But before I get into that, also breakfast 
sauce is now officially available, the W sauce breakfast sauce. And it is, they also have breakfast sauce too. I've not been able to acquire any of that yet, but breakfast sauce, so stupid good on eggs, but uh, uh, amazing. So the sauce with Luke Duncan. So here we go. Uh, But before I get into what I'm going to talk about, uh, I want to just say that Adrian finally got a W. He's been all around it. He gets the win. We talked about it a little bit last week, but he gets the win up there at Cayuga. And he did it the right way. And I have confirmed this with multiple people, but he is he did it the right way. And Adrian, uh, Adrian fished that event, find a new fish, and absolutely crushed it. Uh, he was quoted as saying, like, he called his family. He never does this, but he felt like he had found the fish to win because he found so many big ones uh, in practice. And uh, it's, it's really cool to see it all come together. I talk, I, whoop, mic issue. Mike issue right there. Uh, I talked last week <clears throat> about the Cayuga event being the most amazing smallmouth deal. And, and since then, there's just been this just like vomit on the internet about what went down and how it really was. And now I've talked to people. I, so I reported on that last week as a fan, right? Like watching it just as a normal dude and not talking to anybody that was in the event, not talking to anybody that worked in the event, not talking to anybody that works for the organization, just like outside looking in. Now I do know I was getting texts from some industry people that are like, this is disgusting. What's going on up here? And I'm like, what are they talking about? Like, I really didn't see it. Uh, you know, I talked on the show, like I felt like it was weird, that like Dudley, uh, and I'm not picking on Dudley. He's my boy, but, um, uh, was talking about, well, yeah, I got a 5.13 and a 5.7 and a 5.9 and a blah, 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 blah that I'm going to go catch that he'd already caught. And there was definitely – that was going on. And Kyle Welser and I talked about it last week. They have a rule against catching the same fish in the same day uh, for the for the one angler, right? Like you personally, which is very hard to police. But that being said, it's a damn rule. It's in the rules. And, uh, and if nothing else, if it's hard for the organization to police, you should police yourself. Think about that. You should police – yourself on that um but that being said that tournament was not the most epic smallmouth tournament of all time at all um to me the weights are phony other than adrian and a couple others who did it the right way um i think the the fact that there's 22s and 23 pound stringers all the way down to freaking 40th place or whatever there's a lot of bullshit involved with it there just is and uh, hang on a second for YouTube's sake. Bull, bull, bull. But uh, sorry, I forgot to bleep myself this morning. But there's a lot. There's a lot of it, man. And there's smoke and mirrors in bass fishing. And and on this show, I have tried for years to really just show the folks. Like I get really tired of the smoke and mirrors because I've lived it. And uh, and and there's a lot of it. And, that, and I'm not a hater because of that. Like, I just try to tell the truth. Like, I do. I try to tell the truth. I try to give a look behind the curtain of what's actually going on. And this one's got me. This one's got me because because uh, I bit into it. Because, like I said, I didn't have any information. And, and not long after I recorded, I got sent a link, a link to a video. Uh, some guys on TikTok, the Alabama Bass Council uh, post, and it was uh, – I'm just a damn, I mean, they went for it. A statement about Matt Becker uh, catching the same fish twice in the same day. And it looks very much like he's in the exact same spot. And uh, and he's, he's oh, man, I, I, and he's biggest as a four or smallest as a 415. He's got to have one over five. And this one weighed five, four earlier in the day. And he's like, oh, man, I hope it helps. And, and they called him to the mat on it. And, look, I know Matt Becker. I like Matt. I like Matt. I think he's a nice guy, nice kid, good fisherman, obviously, good fisherman. Um, but it looked like, allegedly, in this video, that he caught the same fish twice in the same day. And that was kind of the first thing that I saw. Somebody sent me that link. It was them talking about it. Of course, Alabama Bass kind of like, they're going to call everybody to the mat, you know. Um, no pun intended, Matt Becker. But uh, but it was it was pretty obvious, right? Like it was, it was pretty obvious to me. It looked like the exact same deal. So what gets you in these MLF deals is every one of those little boxes you see on the back of the boat is a GPS tracker. <laughs> it tracks your movement all day long, <clears throat> so they can see where you're at. Like you, they they know where you're at. And through some like discussion this week with some folks, 
uh, it was going on. Like that was damn sure happening. That was happening where guys were, were going in and catching the same fish. Um, there was another trick and, and Russ Lane made a big post and Russ and I are going to do one hell of a podcast one of these days. Cause Russ is, Russ is old school, a lot like I am at times. And Russ has played this game for many years and he made a post alluding to the fact that there were shenanigans at play. And this came out like during the week, this past week, since I posted and he alluded to the fact that there was just some, some bull going on up there with a lot of guys that wasn't necessarily the game he was playing or guys like Andy Morgan and, and these dudes that actually called them better from the first day to the second day, but then fell in the standings. Right. And, and so this game that was getting played is, uh, to, to quote someone from MLF told me like, well, dude, Cayuga, if you and I were on a friend fishing trip, it would have been awesome. Like you and I just buddies. Oh, there's some big ones. A dude called a nine pounder up there. Is it a fantastic fishery? Absolutely. Jacob Wheeler caught a seven pound small man. There's giants up there. It's a great fishery. When Dustin Connell won last summer, he's just catching four pounder after four pounder after four pounder. It was epic. Okay. The lake's got him. It's got big green ones, big brown ones. But to quote someone from MLF, they're like, there were basically like 40 fish over five pounds on bed on the whole lake, and they all got caught repeatedly round robin because what guys were doing. Now, this part is not against the rules. This part is not against the rules. But ethically, I think it sucks. But what guys were doing is because they it's all live, it's all catch and release, and it's all score tracker driven. If you're in an area with Billy Bob and Billy Bob just weighed a 6'4 update and you ask your boat official, when did he catch that 6'4? It was an hour ago. Then they would dip over there and catch the same one. And that was going on a ton. A ton. So like this event that I thought was just mind-blowing wasn't. It wasn't. Now, again, I said this last week, catching the same fish like four days in a row, if, if you're a guy. And they were all doing it. Veterans, I shouldn't say all, but there were some really big names doing this. Um, and and it's that's disgusting, but whatever. And, and whenever you preach from MLF side, you know, it's the future of the sport and conservation and whatnot, like, I'm all for catching betting. I love it. And, and y'all can argue in the comments this all day long. I don't care. I will always love sight fishing. And you can say it's the easiest way. Well, smallmouth, they are kind of dumb. But that's fun because fish aren't always dumb. So I like dumb fish. Okay? That's fun for me. I like catching a six-pound smallmouth as I look at it and making it bite. It's fun for me. Um, sight fishing is something I've loved, whether it's a bedding fish, a cruising fish, something in salt water, a red fish. Like, I love sight fishing. I love using my eyes. I always have. It's probably, if I'm decent at anything in bass fishing, it's probably what I'm, I'm decent at. Like, I love it. Um, I see comments all the time. be like, oh, it's just the easiest way. No, it's not. Uh, especially for big, largemouth, it's not. But there's a gift, you know, not a gift, but a, but a definite talent to finding them, to being able to get them to bite, especially on highly pressured fisheries, largemouth that is. Smallmouth typically bite, for the most part, they'll they'll bite again, obviously, in this situation. Um, but, so I'm all for that. But when you preach conservation with the catch way release, and then they just get pounded in the face <laughs> all day, so the score tracker weights run up, like that sucks. So what this is going to do, I think is we'll probably never see another uh, catchway release deal built around the spawn for sure because it's spawn and smallmouth, which sucks because they're fun to watch in my opinion, and 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 that's ruined that because MLF they're going to catch hell from hell maybe even the state of New York over this. I mean truly. It just doesn't look good. It's not not a good look at all. They were up there before bass season officially opens when you can actually put one in your live well. And so they're allowed to with the catchway release. So it gave them an opportunity to like showcase this body of water. And look, it was great. Again, there were guys that did it the right way that caught multiple 20-something pound bags. But I dare say they didn't know a lot of this shady bullshit was going on. And they do now, and they're pissed about it. There's a lot of them. 
But the overall theme of this podcast and this, 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 the sauce with Luke Duncan this week is the desperation mode that is setting in in professional bass fishing for the last few years is getting disgusting. And there are multiple factors that point to why it's getting that way. Um, but it's very much pro fishing is a case of the haves and the have nots for sure. You may be on the Bass Pro Tour. You may be on the Elite Series. But if you're not one of the – I'm going to say there are 20 to 25 guys, in my opinion. I work in the industry. I do this. Uh, 20 to 25 guys that are relevant in this industry, in my opinion. And, by, and when I say relevant, it's like you might be a fan of somebody that's number 39 on the list or whatever, and that's fine. What I mean by relevance is needle movers for actually moving a product for a sponsor – uh, for performance reasons on the water and off the water, but they're 20 to 25. And those guys are, and, and maybe it's 30, maybe it's 15, right? But but that being said, those are the guys that are making all the money. Those are the guys that, uh, you know, they, they got it figured out. They got it dialed in. And I think that since you've got social media, just really, and, and no matter what, area you're in in life social media makes you feel like you need more right it does like if you see your neighbor post on social media he just got some badass old corvette and you're into that kind of thing like damn johnny got a corvette i gotta get me two of them but it makes you feel less than dude i I scroll though look i got this look at this father's i got this dad bod right and i scroll through instagram and it's just just muscles what's up and abs and i'm like damn i'd like to do that and then i'm just like "Mm, hand me another tito's and some oreos (laughs) i mean but it but it does it's what it creates so what social media is done in fishing because everybody's got they blah 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 fishing on instagram and blah 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 fishing on tiktok and now you've got so much pressure on an actual touring professional because they get it from all angles man they get it from all angles the sponsors are telling them you, you ain't posting on social media enough. You're not making enough monthly post for Jimmy John's freaking sandwiches. I wish I had a Jimmy John sponsorship. You're not making enough post for blah, 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 lure company. We need at least nine posts a month and your engagement's down and your blah, blah, blah. So they're hearing that. And then they go into a tournament and there's about 10 guys just drumming them over and over and over and over because they're out working them. And they're better anglers. And they figured out we're in this new age with live scope, live scope, live scope. And these guys are forward-facing sonar beating their asses into the lake bottom. Desperation mode. Bloop, 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 bloop. Keeps kicking in. Keeps kicking in. So when you open the door on like a bedfish deal like this in New York, with gray areas on top of people that are obviously willing to do anything to succeed when you throw a little money at them and they get the one chance where they can kind of the system a little bit. They jump on it. They jump on it. And to my knowledge, there are like four in the top 10 from the BPT at Cayuga that are being investigated to potentially be DQ'd. Now, MLF has a absolute huge opportunity to stomp them, to stomp them. And when I say stomp them, I'm talking about all you bedfish snagging, hole sitting, freaking waypoint seeking, weight feeding walleye. <laughs> Damn, you bottom feeders that are willing to do anything just to get a little bit ahead and hide behind whatever it is. Like to thank my Lord and Savior for this one, knowing you're being shady. Get out of here with that crap. That's been going on for years, dude. The televangelist speech on stage or the televangelist speech on the boat while you're doing something shady. It's bull crap. It's bull crap. And I get so sick of it. Like... I can't imagine sitting at home 
and making a social media post after this event, knowing this is how you know people don't have a conscience and they just want to succeed, is making a recap video of how I top 10 the BPT, knowing, knowing good and damn well you broke a rule or at least tried to get around it. And let me explain. So these fish can only be caught once a day is the MLF rule because it's catch, weigh, release by the angler. They can only be caught one time by the angler that caught it. So there were guys in the top 10 that were catching one. They knew where they were sight fish wise. And so they would either pull up where they could not see the bass and throw right where the hell they knew it was, okay? And catch it, because smallmouth are aggressive. Weigh it. Wait a few minutes, and then go look at it and catch it. And then go look at it and catch it. And that was going on by some of the best in the game. But it's all on camera. It's all on camera. Something else that's on camera is, is guys not showing the camera that a fish was hooked in the mouth, which is a rule. It's a rule that it, a, all sight fish have to be hooked inside of the mouth. Now, in year one, when Jeff Sprague was, he was laying out there like this, and he was unhooking them, and they were hooked in the back of the head, and then he's, woo, I got him. Everybody then started really, hey, Mr. Official, this one is hooked inside the mouth. And the good guys do that. You can watch them. He's hooked inside the mouth. Now, there was some on camera that was arguing, oh, I wasn't looking at this one. I wasn't looking at this one. He's hooked. He's hooked right here. And let me, let me finagle this around and pull this hook out. Oh, look, it came out of his mouth. Look, just like that. There's a lot of that going on. Um, but... There were, and, and, and Spencer Sheffield was one of them. Like I said, I like Spencer Sheffield. Marty Stone, who, if Marty Stone and I, maybe we could have a beer together. I don't know. Marty Stone probably, I, I don't know. I don't know Marty. Um, but I give I like to give Marty hell. But Marty Stone on camera, when Spencer did this for like the third time, said, um, well, that's against the rules. Like he said it on live. One of the commentators, he said it. Because Spencer was leaning way out there and unhooking him. And, Whoa, got him. The desperation desperation mode is high, man. It's high. It is high. The desperation mode is high. We're seeing it at all levels. You you got high school anglers. Their mamas and daddies will pay whatever. Seen it. Seen it in my very own hometown years ago. Mamas and daddies willing to pay for their babies to win the big time. And you know what it gets them later in life? Nothing. Nothing. But you see it each and every day. Each and every day, college anglers and daddies will buy $200,000 worth of boats, trucks, equipment, wrap them, send them out there, slap them on the ass. Get out there, boy. You don't, you're setting them up to fail in life. But the desperation level is high because you have to fake it until you make it. You have to blow up social media like you are something, even though you're, you're not. On the Elite Series of the BPT, you have to try to convince someone. Otherwise, the desperation mode is high. The industry has created this, but the desperation mode is at an all-time high. We look at the Tucker Smith incident from earlier this year. That kid wins a million dollars in the Bass Pro deal. Him and his boy Logan Parks. Desperation mode's high. You got to keep that up. You got to keep that up. Enter Joe Durham, <laughs> the craziest, I mean, story of the freaking bass fishing last five years, the insanity that was that you follow open. And guess what? Old Tucker's just, he's right back at it. I think Tucker's a good fisherman, maybe a great young man, but I know that incident was shady, shady, period, shady. And you hear this crap all the time, but it's normally whispered behind the weigh-in trailer whispered in group texts with guys that are afraid to speak out. And if some of these pros would publicly, like, like I'll talk about, I'm not in the event and I will do my best to tell the story. Uh, but if a Russ Lane or a, damn, a Jacob Wheeler, like if Jacob said, and I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers at Jacob, but if Jacob would say, Hey y'all, this is what happened at this event. 
da 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 and talk about some of this crap because if you're at a press conference in the NBA Finals and somebody tried to gouge LeBron's eyes out, you don't think LeBron would be like, well, yeah, he tried to gouge my eyes out. Y'all all saw it. Let's not ignore it. Let's talk about it. JT Kenny said on this very show, we cover up the things in bass fishing that we should cover. And again, the bed fish snagging, whole sitting waypoint getting outside of, you know, no information, but getting all the information, the freaking up to the minute updates out of off limits, the shit you hear from the opens, the elites, the BPTs, all the, the, the crap we used to hear on the FLW tour. It's ridiculous, man, because at the same time as we're trying to act like the integrity of the sport is so great, you have this desperation thing and thirst level that's so high, people, they got they got to try to hold the cardboard check. They got to try to hold the trophy at all costs. But we're selling kids in high school, the ones that don't have the mama and daddy that's going to buy them the gazillion dollar boat, that's going to buy them waypoints, that's going to buy them guide trips so they can try to beat people. They're just trying to learn how to bass fish and they're trying to do it the right way. We're selling them that where they want to be is on the elites or the Bass Pro Tour or MPFL or whatever they choose to pick, MLF Invitationals, with crap like this going on at every event. Every event. There's shady stuff going on at every event. So we are trying to sell them. You should work hard and get here so you can get your brains beat out by a few people a week that don't give a damn about the rules. So when I say MLF has an opportunity to squash some of these bugs, they need to put on a size 12 work boot and stomp it. You DQ about four from that top 10, make a damn statement. They fumbled the Jeff Sprague thing, and then, and then they backpedaled on the Sprague thing, the information thing from last year, made an announcement, and, and made an example out of him. There were probably a lot more of them than an example made. I pick on Jeff a lot because I, I, like, I like, think he shouldn't be in pro fishing anymore. I do. I think there are simple mistakes, and then I think there are very calculated mistakes that people make over and over and over and over. Mistakes. And I think, he, he, you know, you see a guy like Mike McClellan not invited back to the Bass Pro Tour over performance, but Jeff Sprague gets right back in. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And to me, these guys, if they were knowingly doing what they were, and it's on camera, it's on camera, knowingly doing what they were doing, they should be tossed. Period. I don't care what the resume looks like or used to look like. I don't care. Bump them. Get them out of here. Get them out of here. It's high, man. A desperation level is high. And I, I don't know. And look, I, this, this is not new. But social media and the world we live in has definitely taken this to the next level. It's definitely taken this next level. You got the Tony Christian situation from back in the day. All you youngsters like, what in the hell? Because that was 20 years ago. I mean, he took FLW for a ride, son. A ride. And was physically, I mean, cheating about as bad as a man could cheat. Supposedly had him in a box, snatching him out with a jig. He won the BFL All-American. He top five FLWs, won hundreds of thousands of dollars, and then <laughs> disappeared into the night. Nobody talked about it. We cover up the things we should cover. Cover up the things we should cover. This year, the biggest scam, these walleye weight feeders. Headline news worldwide. Worldwide. Make some examples out of some of these bass fishermen. They lose a few sponsors. I promise you. There's only so many ways. When you call it on camera, it'd be like if you were cheating on your wife, right? You cheating on your wife. On video. You on the internet on some of them, you know, questionable websites. Somebody done posting. You doing your best work, son. That ain't me. Damn AI. It's Photoshop. I love my wife. But you caught red-handed on camera. Like, don't try to explain it away. It was like the, it, you know, the spray thing. It's like the, the John Sokup thing from MPFL. It's on camera, dog. Snagging them up. It's on camera. 
I didn't do that. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, you did. It's on camera. So with this one, there are several on-camera incidents. Wipe it out. So MLF's looking into it. That's for sure. Um, there's a letter that went to the anglers this week that I was able to uh, get a copy of here at the LBL Bar and Grill. Do I have a beady? Let's see. I need like a breaking news thing. Breaking news. So this letter was sent out. And, uh, and I want to say this. Now that uh, the folks that are in charge at BPT, the Kathy Fennels of the world, like I do believe the right thing will be done. But this is a letter that's gone out. It says the payout, and I won't say the angler, but uh, dear blah, blah, blah. The payout for the Bass Pro Tour Stage 5 on Cayuga Lake has been released. If you earn a check and are signed up for electronic payment, you will receive it today. We are, however... We are, however, in the process of reviewing MLF camera video for potential violations, including, but not limited to, rule number nine. That states, when a bass is caught while sight fishing, it must be verified immediately by the MLF official that it has been hooked on the inside of the mouth before removal of any hooks to be counted in the daily weight. Say that with me from the back of the congregation. It must be verified immediately by the MLF official that has been hooked on the inside of the mouth before removal of any hooks to be counted in the daily weight. Can I get a hallelujah from the back? Okay. Also rule nine, section E to be specific, that states when sight fishing, fishing visibly targeting bass with your eyeballs, anglers cannot weigh the same bass more than once Per day, catching the same bass while sight fishing more than once per day and weighing it more than once per day may result in a loss of weight, loss of fishing time, a fine or other penalty as outlined in 3A as determined by the tournament director. See, the problem I got with that is too wide open. It's too wide open. So you should be, if you, if you knowingly go catch the same one twice in the same day, A, you're a piece of garbage, okay, um, and you know what you're doing. And it's not fair to the damn fish at that point. You're ridiculous. But uh, the fact that says loss, loss of weight, loss of fishing time, a fine or any other penalty, that's, you should just be bounced. Like the penalty, do, like that's a harsh penalty that does fit the crime in that situation. Period. End of story. But, uh, but anyways, they're looking into it. Several anglers have come forward alleging that some competitors weighed fish that were not verified by MLF officials and that some competitors caught the same fish twice while sight fishing. We take these allegations seriously, thus the comprehensive video review that is currently underway. The review may take some time to complete and may ultimately result in penalties as well as adjustments in the points and payout received by the anglers. We are also working with the angler board on potential rule updates. Yeah, you can bet there'll be some rule updates. You might not ever be able to sight fish again. Who knows? But that is from Kathy Fennell, signed Kathy Fennell, who's a saint of a human being. Big Kathy Fennell fan. But uh, but they sent that out. They sent that out. So as you hear me ramble, if you're a if you're a, a fan of uh, you know one of these guys that I'm that that may end up getting bumped, uh, just know like it is serious. It is serious, and I don't care how you explain it away. It's serious. And dude, listen, I could go into a lot more detail about what I've been told by people within that organization. Uh, but in order to not just really have them uh, beheaded, I won't. But it's like this is shady, dude. This was, this is, uh, this is, this is one of those like what to me, and and good for Tucker Smith and Joe Durham. This trumps that now. We've we've kind of that was a great story for a while. Now we've moved. We're moving on. <laughs> we're moving on, and this is one. And uh, MLF's got a big. They got a big responsibility here. We got a big responsibility here to, uh, you know, dig through the footage and do what's right. Do what's right for the integrity of of the sport that we're trying to sell to high school kids and college kids to try to get them to do the right thing on and off the water. And if we don't, uh, you know, we're doing them a disservice, and we're doing uh, we're doing the industry a disservice because a lot of these guys. Do have some sponsor money. They represent them sponsor. Oh, 
yeah, sponsor, I caught this on the sponsor bait. Let me do a gear rundown for you while you're being shady. Sucks, man. It sucks. I'm tired of it, to be honest. Um, just because there's been so many, just like, there's gray area bull crap at all pro tournaments and, and, and good on you. It's like the, you know, the Keith Boucher stuff. He lives in the gray. We talked about it with him on here. Like he exploits where there are holes in the deal. And then there's a Keith Boucher rule the next year, right? Like the red river thing, like what he did winching himself in and all that. Like he said, yeah. And I said it on here, like joking. Yeah. You're a badass when you get a rule named after you. Like there've been several, there were Roland Martin rules and Scott Martin rules and, and Kevin Van Dam rules. And once you kind of f- figure out where the, where the gray area is, and then nobody else figures that out and it gives you a competitive advantage. And all of a sudden they have to go back and change it because the organization missed something, which how could you ever, you know, uh, have everything covered. Right. I mean, it's tough. And, uh, and everybody's always going to look for an advantage because all these guys and Russ Lane said, it, Hey, everybody out here, they're fantastic anglers. There are 80 guys, hundred and whatever guys on the elites that are fantastic. Anglers. they're better fishermen than you and I, a lot of them are. From ability-wise, from their split-second decision-making, from their use of electronics, knowing what to do where, they've got vast amounts of experience. They're fantastic anglers. But what separates some of them are just a lot better than the other ones in that, which is scary. But then you've got a lot of shady crap that goes on as well. And then you've got the guys that aren't necessarily always at the top. And and I think what happened with this MLF deal, like I stated earlier, at Cayuga was the door swing. Swing. God. Swung wide open. And they ran through it because it was this bed and smallmouth thing. And like, ooh, I can get me a top 10 here and I ain't had a top 10 in freaking forever. I can, I can, and, and certainly not talk about it like a guy like Dakota Ebear, who's beating the brakes off of them. Adrian Avina, Jacob Wheelers, beating the brakes off of them. Beating the brakes off of them. One of those names that, that you hear over there all the time. Alton Jones Jr., beating the brakes off of them. Absolute beating the brakes off of them. Over and over and over. But, I, and I feel for guys like Anthony Gagliardi, barely missed the top 10. Barely. Didn't get to go fish that final day. Several of them right outside of it. It's just not all right. It's not all right. And look, I ain't pick, I, I'm not, this has, this is not a pick on MLF session. This is a pick on MLF anglers that did this crap session because trust me when I say it happens everywhere. Uh, I work for MPFL. We've got, I mean, you always hear bull crap all the time, right? That's going on, whether you can either prove it or not prove it. Same thing with the Elite Series. You hear whether it's information, uh, hole jumping in the events that's not necessarily against the rules, but it's bull crap. You know, there's, there are things that go on. Um, I mean, dude, I can watch a video of a guy, right? I've been keeping up with this for a long time, but I can watch a video of a guy on a lake that's not from that area, especially if it's like a local deal right around here, and watch him use some little specific bait and go, yeah, that's the local tip. Like, he didn't figure that out on his own. These guys are great, but he didn't figure out, like, that exact thing. And you see it. You see it a lot. You can call it out. If you pay enough attention, you can call it out. So I'm I'm very – uh, I try to be open and honest as much as I can on the show. Y'all know that. And I was absolutely, like – fist pumping over the Cayuga event last week and uh shame on me if it's too good to be true most of the time it is (laughs) most of the time it is man and that just uh it is what it is so few guys always ruin the fun for everybody that's for sure all right thank y'all for listening to my ramble hope all you dads had a great father's day that was the sauce presented by the w sauce with luke duncan maybe i should just change the name of the show reckon sell them old title deal Somebody told me last week that I had tiny sponsors. I was like, well, I mean, I don't know. I don't think they're tiny. (laughs) That was a negative. Like, you have sponsors, but they're tiny. Okay. Cool, man. Probably like a Bass Boat Central dweller that said that, like mouth breeders. Uh, Did you know that people still get on forums? And I'm sorry, if I have fans of this show, low lifers that get on forums, forums are still a thing. I didn't know that forums still existed. Like that was pre social media stuff for me going to get fishing reports when I was like 19 I, and I'm 40 now. I didn't know that forums were still a thing. Apparently they are. Apparently they are, which is hilarious. Uh, all right. I'm going to take y'all out with this, uh, this father's day tune. 
I appreciate y'all listening. I uh, appreciate y'all hearing me out. This is this was a week that really I didn't want to guess. I want to get that out there. And uh and and it's you know it, it's uh it's a shame. It, it's dang sure a shame that we have to talk about stuff like this because it's been a while since I've done kind of a rant ramble episode by myself too. But uh because I really do like like I would a lot rather have the Kyle Welcher episode last week where we get his freaking great story of his life because he's got a really cool story. He's a great dude, great fisherman. But uh, but I started this show with integrity and trying to speak the truth, right? And it's just always going to be that for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it like I see it, right, wrong, or indifferent, and I don't care if I hurt your feelings on that. And, uh, and, and I'm sure there will be guys that I, I did not name necessarily all of the ones, uh, and I'll wait till it comes out if it does, uh, if MLF does the right thing on it, but there'll be guys that get their, Oh, he's talking about things, talking about me, get their feelings hurt. And that's fine. That's fine. Um, don't be shady. Don't be shady. So, all right. You bunch of low lifers. Hope everybody has a great week. We are rolling in on, um, uh, Man, we're getting close to the 4th of July. It's crazy. Got a birthday coming up. Next episode will be like the pre-birthday celebration episode. Go take y'all out with this Father's Day song. I'm going to put this out eventually, I think. I have a lot of, uh, when I've played it on here and played it in videos and things, people do ask for it, which is very cool for me. But uh, appreciate each and every one of you. Be sure to support the people that support this show. And I will see y'all next week. And whiskey won't fix a heart that aches. Whiskey won't cure a heart that aches These are a few Things To know As you ramble On down The road Don't rush the moment to get to the next There's worse things in life than a wife when an ex Most of the time you don't get what you deserve Always stick to your word Always stand by your word These are a few things no. As he ramble on down the road. Well, most bartenders ain't your friends. Don't throw away love or a winning hand and Always sing at the top of your lungs Fake it till you make it, it'll come Fake it till you make it, it will come These are few things to know As you ramble on down this road. Do what you say, don't say what you do. There's only one love in this life is true. Mama's rule with a steady hand. Best gift in life is being a dad. Best gift in life is being a dad. These are a few things to know. Is your ramble on down this road?